Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money. Today is Tuesday, Bitcoin has been recovering a bit, uh, but let's go to the charts and have a quick analysis of what's going on. Here we are on the price to time model. Let's check in with the price action. So the price action is now above the 2017 cycle by the same time. So around, you know, I'm comparing the yellow, uh, the yellow candle uh, pattern with the current cycle here. And we are above the 2017 cy bull cycle. This small recovery has been uh, good, at least for the psychology of the people involved in this market. And I hope you guys are holding on there and just hodling your positions because this is not the time to sell. This is the time to accumulate. So you guys know what to do. So comparing with the, the previous cycle, so the blue cycle is the 2013 and 14 cycle. You guys know this already. I have been keeping this here just for us to know where we are in comparison to the previous two, two cycles. So we are still ahead of time comparing to the previous cycle. So the RSI is still going up. So we had the V-shape recovery on the RSI down here as compared again to the previous uh, to the cycle of 2013, which is this orange dashed line here at almost at the mean uh, between the two dashed lines of the RSI. And we are now turning back up on the RSI. So this is a weekly uh, RSI. Of course, it will take some time until we catch up. But uh, again, as yesterday, we are still um, not not very far from the orange dashed line here. So that's that's uh, what I have for you guys regarding the price to time model today. Nothing, uh, no big changes uh, since yesterday. So let's check the charts here on the MRI. Uh, so as you guys see, and I also explained it yesterday, the second the second trend line that I plotted some time ago by the end of the last year and beginning of this year, I believe it was around that period, uh, is still holding the price here. So we have a green uh, candle for the week. We have been recovering. We went already uh, as far as almost 40k almost 40k but now we have been having a bit of retracement since this morning so so far the trend line is still holding so let's see what this has um what it will show us in the future however even if we have another drop down as i also said yesterday on on, on the previous video uh, I still consider a 30% possibility, 30 to 40%, so a bit less than half 50-50 um, percent of a possibility that we still go down for a last uh, drop before the final recovery or the price reverse, um, reversal to the upside and probably being um, a big support, the 50-week SMA, which is around, now it's around the 20 28,000 and a half and probably will be a bit higher next week 29 29 uh, and 100 around that so I hope that if we still have a leg down and those 30% probabilities occur we will be supported by the 50 period SMA as shown in this chart you guys can see it here so the yellow is the 50 period coming up and I hope that if we still have a final leg down on the price action, this will be the support around the 29K, 30K and then it could happen that we have finally a bottom and a price reversal to the upside. But that is only if this prob probability occurs, which I give 30 to 40% probability to occur. So that's the weekly price action here. So let's go to the RSI. It continues to go up uh, now almost at the mean line here at the RSI levels. The MACD continues to go down. However, as I said also already sometimes, this bar is losing momentum as compared to the previous two. So you see the gap between the third bar here and the second 
uh, before this current one is much bigger than the current bar to the previous one. So the bearish momentum is losing strength and I hope that we are close, very close to find the bottom for this retracement, this big drop of 54%. Uh, so let's see what happens. Uh, so on the weekly, the BitMEX funding rate doesn't make much sense to calculate. So let's go to the daily. And on the daily, here it is, guys. This is what I was expecting for a long time already. This is one of the first big signs that we are in for some uh, bottom close to, um, close to today. So in the near future. This is the first time on the daily that we break this channel, this going down, the, the ranging channel of this retracement that we have been having since the 12th of May. And the month of May is has been uh, like blood, uh, blood on the streets. And for the first time, we have this big green candle that went above the opening of the previous day. So this is a very good sign. It broke this ranging channel to the upside and we are now again consolidating in this area however the fact that this candle of today is not going below even half uh, below the half uh, part of the previous candle is a very good sign and also it found support again on the trend line so the daily chart is showing the first signs of a nice uh, probable recovery however don't forget <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry for that. Don't forget that we still have the probability of a final leg down that could leave a week going as far as 25, 26. Um, yeah, around the 25 or 26K, like uh, another last final uh, flash crash that could have a V-shape recovery and reversal to the upside. But as I said, 30% to 40% is my probability of that happening. Uh, so the bigger probability, however, is to find support again on the trend line and consolidate for some time and then have a final price reversal to the upside here. So this is the very, very nice and first sign that we are in for some recovery. Let's see where this takes us. So the RSI has been oversold for the last few days with the exception of the 20th of May, when we had also some kind of recovery here on this candle. However, the drop that followed that one was uh, put us also in oversold territory on the RSI, and we are now going sideways on the daily. So let's see how this ends today, and we start the candle for tomorrow. The MACD, however, is also showing some promising signs. I'm just using the <laughs> looks promising phrase from Elon Musk. So this looks promising. The blue line is already going up and closing the gap to the orange line. And you guys can see also the bars on the daily are uh, turning into light red and going back up again. So being uh, um, shorter than the previous ones. So this indicates already some um, some good sign that we are recovering the price action to the upside. So that's it for the daily. Let's go to the four hours and we will be able also to see the BitMEX funding rate here. Well, the BitMEX funding rate here is nothing, completely neutral. So just a bit above the zero, which is 0.006. And the premium is to the downside, in, in fact. So the premium is negative right now. So I guess people are just waiting on the sidelines to see what happens in this consolidation phase at the bottom. Uh, so the BitMEX funding rate is not really relevant now. It's not giving us any market sentiment. So there's no point discussing it. So this is the consolidation area in the last, uh, in the four hour chart for the last few days. Um, we have been, we had this big drop to the downside here uh, on the 19th of May, and then we had another retry for that level, but the support was good here. And we went back up again above the trend line and out of the ranging channel, as you guys can also see here. I'm just going to zoom in a bit more. So this is the moment, this is the candle, and even with the buy signal, a green star, where we broke the ranging channel that was bringing the price action to the downside and also 
the uh, the trend line which is this white line here almost horizontal that has been holding again the price action and not letting it go to the downside so this is the four hour uh, we are still however on the uh, on uh, um, red count three of nine uh, the, the candle just started uh, five minutes ago it's again trying to go to the downside so you guys see that this has been this 50 period sma has been uh, stopping the price from continuing the, the move up, moving up, and we have to wait some time until we see if we can break this uh, 50 period SMA to the upside, which will take us to 45k without any more resistance except this one. This will be the next resistance we have. Uh, so if we break this 40k level with the 50 period SMA, the next level will be 45k, next next resistance, and also the resistance from the MRI here, the red dot at this level, 45 and a half. So that's the four hour for you guys. Uh, the MACD and the RSI here. So the RSI is also a bit neutral, just going sideways. However, on the four hour, we have already a kind of a bullish MACD. The blue line is already above the orange and almost, almost crossing the neutral, the zero line here where the bars start. So let's see if the momentum continues and we are able to um, break this resistance to the upside. So the one hour, just to confirm the BitMEX funding rate really quickly. So it's exactly like the four hour. So there's no movement on the leverage exchanges, the BitMEX being one of the most important. So it, it's kind of the, that's why we have this uh, indicator with uh, data coming from BitMEX. So it's exactly, as I said, 0 0.006, no big change there. So let's take a look at the uh, pro indicators framework. So guys, you, you've seen here, we have a double bottom formation. We are now going up and accumulating in this area. The resistance context, however, starting from this new week has decreased a lot. So the mean price of the resistance context, the support context, sorry, is around 30,500. And the resistance is around the 51,000. So we now are starting a new uh, a new structure for the resistance and support context and the price is almost in the middle so the middle would be around 41 uh, let me check yeah around 40 41 thousand and we are just two thousand below that around that area so it's not good that we have the context going down uh, however, it's possible that if we break the 40k, we could see some leg up uh, to the 40. Um, although the trend channel is also coming down, so it's presenting some resistance here, which I don't like anyway. So let's see what happens. The momentum is also going in, going down here almost vertically. So let's see if in the next few hours or one or two days, we see this reverse to the upside and give us a bit more strength to break the resistance around 40K. Okay, just, uh, just a quick look at the dollar. So the dollar continues continues to try to break this support to the downside again we went lower than the previous candle but immediately went back up so this is uh this is still the weekly candle however but we have been we have been lower than the previous week so yesterday i saw this candle even uh with the body of the candle even shorter so we went down again today and now we are going up so the dollar is really, really trying or testing this support line here. And I hope this line can be broken to the downside, which will, uh, let me just refresh this page because I don't see the MRI numbers. Okay, now it's loaded. So let's see, we are still on a seven. So this is the seventh week of nine on the red count. So it's probably uh, probable that we still have two more weeks of downside and if that can happen, not this week, which is this candle, but the, the, the following two weeks, which will give us two more red candles, uh, probably we could be or we could see a break of this support. And that would be very, very nice for Bitcoin. So let's take a look at gold. And here I will uh, also 
answer a request of our follower Hank Jones. He commented the previous video. He asked me to, hey Hank, how are you? I hope you're having a great day. And you asked me to compare the gold uh, chart with Bitcoin chart. So let's take a look quickly here at gold. We are on a, an MRI top for this week. Gold is not being able to continue this leg up. So the price action has been stopped for some time. This morning, hours ago, I looked at the chart and this, it, it's exactly on the same place. So I bet that this MRI top will turn out to be a reversal on the price, at least for the short term, probably a one to four correction to the downside. If not finding support on the 50 period SMA, probably finding support here on the 20, which is below the 50 right now, but turning back up. But uh, this is a nine count on the green. So I am, uh, I am expecting some kind of price reversal on, uh, re reversal on gold. And let's see what happens. So just to answer Hank Jones, I prepared here a BTC USD index as a line just to compare with gold. So we don't see much of a correlation here or inverse correlation. However, it's, it's not obvious, but you can see it just a bit that when gold started to come down, Bitcoin started to go up and this was uh, basically, the bigger distance was immediately after gold starting to come down that we saw Bitcoin starting to go up. But this is more visible if you go to the daily chart and you can see that there is an inverse correlation at least at least since let's see here since the 16th of February this year that we have been having Bitcoin going up while gold was coming down and now gold formed a double bottom here started to go up and Bitcoin e immediately after this not immediately but a few days after gold started to go up Bitcoin started to come down so there is there is and this was very intelligent uh, from Hank Jones to ask me to do this comparison because there's been a long time since I did it um, since I did this this comparison so it's uh, now it's obvious on the on the one day chart that there is an inverse correlation here between gold and Bitcoin. So it's probable that the most the 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 the, um, the money is is circulating from Bitcoin to gold and from gold to Bitcoin and not much as I was uh, expecting. Um, flowing from the dollar to Bitcoin and Bitcoin to the dollar. So we see an inverse correlation here with gold, which is very important. So this means that probably while Bitcoin has been coming down, people have been sending the money, selling Bitcoin to buy gold and vice versa. At least since the middle of February this year, we see this inverse correlation here on the chart. So thank you, Hank Jones, for su suggesting that I could compare Bitcoin with gold and let's uh, for now let's just turn off the comparison and leave it like that and let's take a look here at the SMP. So the SMP has been seeing a recovery since uh, the the day started so this was uh, like 15 hours ago something like that 16 hours ago uh, so the candle has been on the positive side which has been stopping this one to four correction here. So it's, it shows that there's a lot of strength here on the, on the S&P and um, it's recovering from a probable one to four candle correction that did not complete. So we had only two candles to the downside and we are now seeing this slight reversal on the price action. The RSI is not overbought yet. Uh, so we are still not in that territory. The MACD is completely neutral, just going sideways. Uh, so there is not much to talk about the S&P. Let's just take a last look at the MACD on the daily for Bitcoin, which was an historical level, as I published on Twitter already a, f a few times. And I also had a, a video about this. So we have here the historic bottom for the MACD on the daily chart of Bitcoin, this was 5,090. Just a smidge down here. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's around 5,100 for the MACD. This was the lowest MACD in Bitcoin's history. However, there is another good sign. The MACD on the daily is now turning back up. And that's also a good sign. 
as you guys can see here the macd on the daily has been turning also up in the uh, on this uh, bar structure we have been having some light red bars and they are decreasing in size so this is also another good indication that we could be very 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 close to find the bottom of this big correction we had in bitcoin so guys uh, I guess this is it for today. So let me just go back here. You guys know already the drill. So let me check if everything is fine. So we are on the main screen. So guys, if you enjoy the content, gently press, gently press as Bichimoku says, the like button. Also uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I hope to see you guys again tomorrow when I publish the new video. And let me just say something before I go. I've been working, so I've been very busy the last few days working on Modern Portfolio Theory by uh, Markowitz. And I have already something almost, almost ready to show something on my spreadsheet, which will help guys, uh, you guys and me and anyone else who wants to use it to calculate the best possible portfolio balance between different assets uh, in order to get the maximum returns with the lesser risk. So I've been working on that. I have already some promising, <laughs> just like Elon Musk says, I just have some promising um, findings on or, or uh, achievements on my, on my uh, spreadsheet. This has been a lot of work because I had to import a lot of data and work on that data, but this is going uh, this is going fine. I see some results already. And in the next few days, probably I will uh, make a special video for uh, educational purposes on how to uh, manage the best way to manage your portfolio structure or balance between different assets. So this is very good. I, I hope to have this finished during the, the course of this week. And I will tell you guys some news about it when this is uh, complete. So that's it for today. So let's let's uh, hear the the wisdom of uh, my friend from the Hill Street Police Department, as usual, to send you guys for a great end of day. All right, let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. Okay, guys. So let's roll and be really careful out there. Don't forget it. Bye bye. See you tomorrow.